Yeah. <laughs> a little slow, but I got it. <laughs> I know. It feels like it's just a hot second. Let me draw, and then my hair starts to get hot. <laughs> Can you put it on your, on your palm so when anyone asks you who your name is, it's like, can you lift your hands? Everyone sees your face now. Morning. Oh, wow. Good morning. Okay, yeah, that's, I think that's the best we're going to get right now. Everyone have their name tag? Good, because my memory's bad this morning. I might not know who you are. Just kidding. There we go. Now I got sound. You ready to worship? Well, then let's worship together. Let's stand together and sing. <coughs> oh, 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 oh. bring your shame bring your guilt to bring your pain don't you know that's not your name you will always be much more to me every day I wrestle with the voices that keep telling me I'm not right that's all right cuz I hear a voice and he calls me redeemed when others say I'll never be Blind 
will sing, through you the mute will sing, through you the dead will rise, through you our hearts will praise, through you the darkness flees, through you my heart screams, I am free. Please be seated. I'm not used to this, as you can see. They've allowed me one more week. <clears throat> After this week, they're going to fire me. I get to make the announcements and welcome you to First Baptist Church on this fall morning. It feels good outside, and I'm so glad to see that you're here today. We all have name tags. If you don't know your neighbor, turn around and look and say good morning to them because it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Thank you for coming to worship with us today. If this is your first time, we hope it won't be your last. We are very blessed to have Reverend uh, Ron Barker from our South Carolina Baptist Convention to be our interim pastor. He has really brought a joy back to our church, and I thank him for that. Do you agree with me? Yes, yes thank you. Um, just a note, and I know they only allow me three minutes, and y'all, that's just not enough time. Um, but this week I was at a, a visitation for a dear friend, and one of our Episcopalian friends said, heard you have a new pastor, and I said, yes. He said, I heard he's pretty good. I said, yes, and we let Episcopalians come to our church, so come on over and visit with us. We, we're glad to see you here today, and uh, we, we know that we've had some people come back, and we're just glad that that's happened too. So thanks to, uh, oh, and just a note to the search committee, just take your time, it's okay, we don't mind, okay. <laughs> All right, so um, we welcome you today. We want to have a record of your attendance, and on the inside of, outside of these pews, inside of these pews are these little attendance records. We hope that you will fill one out. If you're looking for a church family, we hope you'll come back. Also, uh, to my left and through this door is a coffee nook. We do have coffee on Sunday morning. Wake you up, bring you into church. We're glad you're here. Please go and have some coffee and meet some of these nice people at First Baptist Church. Um, have a lot of things going on in our church, and I want to tell you to please read your little bulletin that you got when you came in the door because we just can't go over everything on Sunday morning, but we want you to know that they're there. We have a lot of activities and hope you'll take part in them. A few, just a few things to remind you of. The Barnwell Baptist, Barnwell Bamber Baptist Association is collecting coats for the coat drive. So if you have a coat or a sweater, uh, uh, we would appreciate it. You can just uh, drop them off by the church office. Um, also, we're collecting prisoner packets and um, on the reverse of that, we're doing Operation Christmas Child, so we hope that you will take part in that also. And I was asked just to mention a thing, and I don't know why I have to be given the bad thing to say, but anyway, um, on this side of the church, we have a lot of senior parking, and we would appreciate it if you come in for the 8.30 service. If you've got good legs and you can walk, maybe you could park over here and leave it for these old people that have a problem getting in the church because, actually, they really come in about 8.30, which is not giving them quite enough time for people to leave and them to have a parking space. And so a lot of them have to use the ramp. And as we get older, we, are, we appreciate the fact that y'all love us enough to give us a designated parking space. So I don't need it, but, you know, it's okay. Uh, all right. The other thing is, last but not least, don't want to leave anything out. 
bargain sale. Y'all have heard this before. Well, it's this week and we're getting all nervous. Um, I put one of these in the coffee nook, one outside. I know you're all on Facebook. Please take a picture of it and put it out to all your friends because this is the best free advertisement that we can have. And believe you me, we need it all. But Pastor Ron, Friday afternoon, we got word that we were going to receive two pianos yesterday and a truckload of furniture, and we only had two men on a truck. Well, those two men just couldn't handle that. So we put out a call, and praise the Lord, you should have seen the people that showed up yesterday morning to help us out. God is so good, and he has blessed us so. But just a few reminders. Um, this Wednesday afternoon from 5.30 to 6.30, we're going to be down at 21 Allen Street. If you're volunteering to help us during this sale, even if you've volunteered before, please come because we're set up a lot different than we were before. And we, oh, the good Lord has just opened the heavens and blessed us with so much stuff you can hardly get in the building. So this Wednesday, come if you're going to volunteer. And y'all, we need lots of volunteers. Um, also, Thursday, if you're going to work, we need you there at 4 o'clock on Thursday. If you're baking cakes for the sale, we need to have those by 2 o'clock on Thursday. Um, and we ask you to please come out and support us on Thursday night. That's our VIP night. It only costs you $10 donation. That helps pay for our advertising. Santa Claus is going to be there. Good little boys and girls need to come talk to Santa Claus and have their picture made with them. So we won't uh, bring your cameras, by the way. Um, we want you to be there for that. So please come out and support us. And also, you get first choice of everything. And we have some really good things. Now, did I forget anything? I don't think so. But one thing I do want to call on is Mr. Mike Epperson. He wants to make a little uh, unannounced announcement. Ron, if I can get you to come up front. <laughs> this month is Pastor Appreciation Month, and it's just amazing how God has worked through Ron in our church. Um, we're in a transitional period, and God knew exactly who we needed. Um, he brought Ron to us. And Ron, we appreciate you. Um, you've shared with us about the situation with your son and your family in Florida. Your wife's been down there already, and I understand that you're headed down there for Thanksgiving, to spend Thanksgiving with him. And as a small token of our appreciation, we just wanted to give you this to help out on the trip down there. Thank you. Thank and thank you for everything that you do for us. You. Thank you. And I think uh, Marty Grubbs has Pray First. It's all right, Winky. Maybe next time, right? You get it. All right. All right. Let us pray. Lord God, we just come to you this morning, Lord, and um, recognize this morning, Lord, that you're an awesome God, Lord, and we love you and we care about you, Lord, and we're just thankful for the opportunity to, um, to come worship you, Lord. And I pray that as we come this morning, Lord, that um, that's where our hearts are at, Lord, that we're thinking about worship um, and thinking about our awesome God, Lord. So thank you for, for that opportunity, Lord. Um, Lord, this morning uh, we ask for a special prayer for the uh, pastor search committee, Lord, as they are going out and looking to uh, fill this vacancy, Lord, that um, has been there. And we ask for the right person, God, uh, the person that would come and, and lead our church, Lord, um, into the next phase and next chapter of where we're at, Lord. And we just ask that you be with each member on this committee, Lord, that they're spending time in prayer each day, Lord, and that we're spending time as a, as a membership praying for them, Lord, to help them discern who is that right person to lead us on, Lord. Um, Lord, in Second Chronicles seven fourteen, you tell us that, um, you know, if your people who called by your name would come back to you, Lord, and turn from their wicked ways and humble themselves and pray, Lord, that you would, you would heal their land, Lord. And we pray that there will be the church to start that, Lord, that as individuals we would get down on our knees, Lord, and say, how can a revival start with me, Lord? How can I, can, how can I be a part of that? And that, um, 
Lord, that uh, you'll just be with us today. Lord, be with Ron, Lord, as he comes to lead us in worship, Lord. I pray that you'll move your Holy Spirit through him today, Lord, and allow, uh, allow each one of us to learn something. And, Lord, that maybe there might be one person in who, who might come to the faith as a result of this message this morning. That you be with pastors all across the country today, Lord, as they lead their churches in worship, Lord. And understanding that um, our faith's pretty important. Our country's in a tough spot right now, but the Christians can lead the way here, Lord. So we ask that each one of us would, would know that, Lord. Thank you for sending your son. Thank you again for the opportunity to worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I see the work of your hands. Galaxy spin in a heavenly dance, oh God, all that you are is so overwhelming. And I hear the sound of your voice, all at once it's a gentle and thundering noise, oh God, all that you are is so overwhelming. I delight myself in you, captivated by your beauty. I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed by you. God, I
Good morning. Good to see all of you. Now, here's what we need to do. I hope, hope everybody's got the name tag on. This is not to help you know who you are. I hope that's a given. But uh, what I need for you to do is, now listen carefully. This is heavy instructions, deep. I need for you to stand up, and I need for you to go to five people that you don't normally shake hands with or hug or whatever. And s listen now, say their name, okay? I, I, unless it's a police officer, I love to hear my name. <laughs> okay, you know what I'm saying. And, uh, or my wife. <laughs> but anyway, cut, cut that out. But anyway, I... <laughs> I just, so stand up now and find some folks and so, five people, five people now. Come on, five people. Five people. All right, let's start moving back now. Come on. You're lingering. Rufus. Ron. That's good. Now ease, ease toward the front a little bit if you don't mind so I can see your name tag, all right? There you go. Come on in. Good to see all of you, and uh, this is a good, just good way to start the morning. Fellowship Sunday School class. Who's here for the Fellowship Sunday School class? There we go. And this is which one? I just, Lynn. All right, now Lynn, I want you to 
step right up here and tell us about your class. Um, we are an all ladies, not to be confused with old ladies, Sunday school class. Um, we, the <laughs> ages. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're not. <laughs> um, the ages in our class run from um, 30s and we go all the way up to all the way up. 80s. Um, and it's a lot of fun. We enjoy one another. Um, we just get together and we dig into God's word and we share how God has just um, blessed us and what we've gone through, some of the things, hard times maybe, that we've gone through and um, how he's brought us through them um, victoriously. And um, I love my ladies. I have the opportunity to teach every other Sunday. Um, I, we did that on purpose because when I was asked to come teach, I felt like that God was bringing me into that class also to let them pour into my life. And he has, and I'm thankful for it. And just love my class. Is there still room for other folks? There is plenty of room. So if you don't have a class now, there's just a place to start. If We've, you're a woman. Mm. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's good. Mm -hmm. uh, on three, I want you to say Lynn's name. Ready? One, two, three. Lynn. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you. Good job. Give Miss Lynn a hand, will you? <laughs> These Sunday school classes are so, so important, and um, we, we've got to have some safe places to go to. Well, I want you to, uh, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to the Psalm 36. And we'll, we'll get there eventually. And, uh, but this morning, let's, uh, we're going to talk about David's life a little bit. And, uh, uh, but we go, let's start back at the beginning. Now, you know the drill. We're going to go Adam, potential, Abraham, promise, Passover, David, passion. All right, let's do this. Ready? Adam, David, passion. That's pretty good. I think y'all begin to get this. See what you're what you're going to have here in just a few more weeks is you're going to have the picture of the whole Bible in just a few words that anybody can understand. And hopefully to give you a bigger picture of what's taking place. A lot of times we have little pieces of the different stories in the Bible and, that, and all that we need. That's good. But at the same time, how does that fit? What, what part is, does that play in these? So we're going to come now uh, to David's life. But let's, let's start back just a little bit. We, we talked about how man, everything just broke. And that was the fall of Adam. Everything just broke all to pieces. It just got worse and worse. The flood came. Everybody but eight people on the boat. And then uh, everything started again. And God would come to a man with the name of Abraham. And he said, look, we're having a do-over, Abraham. I got things started, but they just didn't work out. And what I've got a bunch of pieces here. And I need for somebody to come and put this back together again for me. In fact, I want to build, I don't want to just build your family, but I, through your family, I want to build a great nation. Now listen, that through this nation, the final solution for man's problem will come. And you and I know that as Jesus. And that's the big plan. See, there is a plan through this whole thing. And so Abraham says, okay, let's, let's get this done. And he would have a son named Isaac, and he would have a son named Jacob, and then he would have a son named Joseph, who would eventually, when things got rough where these folks were, they would come over to Egypt where Joseph now has found himself, and he would be able to help his family get started once again. Not much happened for 400 years. The people of God, not a big nation yet. Just in fact, not very many people at all. And 
400 years, they would stay in Egypt, and what would happen is they're multiplying. <laughs> and I think I told you last week, multiplying like rabbits. In fact, the Pharaoh said, you know what, this is getting to be a problem, and we got to do something about this. And what we find is that Moses, because of the Passover, and not just because of that event, but a big picture of what would take place 1,400 years later, when God would not do it just temporarily, but would do it once and for all through the blood of Christ. He would pass over sins past, present, and future. Well, time came for somebody to lead him out of Egypt. And he says, okay, Moses, you're the man. Moses said, I can't do this, you know, it's a problem. But he, he eventually did. And he would lead these folks out of Egypt. And uh, things, were going pretty, things were going pretty good. Uh, now they have become a nation while they were in Egypt. And so now there's about a million of them. And they move into the promised land eventually. Moses didn't get to take them to the promised land. He got to set everything up, so to speak. And, but he had some disobedience in his life. This is a, another picture of just how seriously God takes sin. See, God has intentions for our life, but when we take these detours, some of them lead us down to places you can't get back from. And in Moses' case, he got to see it, but he didn't get to possess it. He got to understand what it would be, but he didn't get to be a part of it. And so many times in our own life, we get to see something of what God's doing in a person's life or in a church, and yet we never get to possess it ourselves because of whatever it is we're holding back in our life. And uh, one of the things that begins to happen with the people of God is, and I think I laid it down here uh, or put it in your outline, they became a nation. And that nation at that time was ruled by judges. Now, let me, let me show you what I'm talking about. Just through the Bible. Genesis, where it all started. We got the fall. We got the flood. We got Abraham. You go to Exodus. It's where you get Moses, the people coming out, going into the, into the promised land. God gives the Ten Commandments. In fact, then you get Leviticus, where all these different guidelines for how you worship. In fact, there are over 600 of them that they had. And then you get the book of Numbers, which kind of records all of this happening. And then you get the book of Deuteronomy, which includes four messages by Moses to the people of God before they get ready to take over. And then you come to a book called Judges. Or Joshua. And why, why was it Joshua? Well, what happened is when Moses died, they had to have another leader for this nation. And that would become Joshua. Moses is dead. Joshua's coming. I could say that about your next pastor, you know. I'm going to exit. Joshua's coming. Just keep that in mind. Joshua, I ain't dying, no. <laughs> I just thought. But anyway, uh, that just... Not in the notes. But anyway, we wanted to, we wanted to see that. And, they, and so how would they be ruled then in this land with this new leader? And they would have something called judges, several judges. And uh, people were okay with that. I mean, it worked. I won't go into all the judges' names, but the book of Judges will tell you a little bit about what that's about. Well, then... Interesting things happen. Just like me and you, they kind of looked over into other lands and say, you know what? They don't got judges. They got a king. Can we get a king? Just like a kid. You know, I, I don't have a bike like that. Mom, can we get a bike like that? I mean, you know, I mean, we're just so predictable. You know? Well, you know what? They got a steeple like that. Let's get us one. I mean, it's crazy. Crazy. So predictable. So God's, God says, look, you don't need a king. We got judges. I got a plan. I'm trying to implement the plan. They just kept hee-hawing around and say, look, we want a king. We want a king. We want a king. 
God said, okay, I'll give you a king. His name was Saul. Now Saul, the problem with him was he did, not, he did not lack what it took to lead those people. He didn't have the skills, but the big part was he didn't have the character. Because here is a man who just had a real problem. I mean, and the, where we first see David, where we first see David, he's a young boy. He's a shepherd. Now, this is about passion. David was passionate about God, even as a child. I, I stayed up a little while last night, a little while long, because I took a nap yesterday afternoon, and, and so I was up, and I watched that Clemson game. And, uh, and so I'm watching this thing, and, uh, and I, I just got so tickled because on the sideline, the defensive coordinator for Clemson, he is just, <laughs> you know, they've got one big old boy who pulls him back to keep him from getting on the field. Because he gets so excited, he, he goes down everywhere and he runs up and down and he's in the ref's ear. And he's, one time he was in the ref's ear, I thought he was going to definitely get a penalty. He was all over him. And uh, the ref didn't pay no attention to him at all. And here's this big guy on the side, keep pulling him back, keep pulling him back. Because if he get a penalty, if he gets out there, and you know, coaches aren't supposed to be on the field. And what I got funny, he pulled him back and pulled him back. And they said, you know, look, you may be sore from me doing what I'm going to do to you, but I'm going to protect you, you know. So he kept pulling him back, pulling him back. I've never seen anybody so passionate in my life as that defensive coordinator. And David was that kind of person about God. He was so passionate about God. And see, he at this time was just a shepherd boy, just a shepherd boy. And he's uh, taking care of things. Obviously did a lot of great things, as we know about David, even as a shepherd. But he, David's brothers now are up at a battle. With the, they're in the promised land, but even in the promised land, they're going to run into a few problems. And one of them was the Philistines. Philistines. They had one dude about nine foot, nine inches tall. And now, battle was funny back then. Battle was funny. What they would do is that you'd have, you'd have the people of God's army, Israel, over here. And then you have the Philistines over on this side of the valley. And the way they would do it is the Philistines would send one guy out, Goliath. Then Israel was supposed to send their guy out. <laughs> and the two of them would fight it out. That saved a lot of people's lives, by the way. But anyway, that's the way they do it. But the problem was that Israel, when they saw Goliath, we ain't going out there. Saul said, I ain't going. I mean, he's the leader. I ain't going. Uh-uh, no way. Listen, now listen to me. When you face a giant, <laughs> you don't just find out about the giant, you find out about you. Right? When you face a giant, you find out about yourself. I've mentioned my son. We were talking on the phone because the divorce got final Wednesday. He said to me, uh, what do I do now, Dad? I said, I don't know. Who? He said, what do you mean? I said, let me ask you a question. I said, who are you? He said, what do you mean? I said, this is a big giant. We already know about the problem. Now, who are you going to be? He said, I got to think about that. I said, well, I already think you know the answer. But now we're going to find out who John is. I said, this is not about me. It's not about your mama. It's not about your brother. It's not about your sister. It's not about your ex-wife. not about your kids. It's about you. Who are you? 
And every one of us have to ask that question of ourselves when we face the giant. Now, when David showed up, he went by Chick-fil-A, got a bunch of stuff, took it out to his brothers. You know how they make those trays? David had a whole bunch of them. And uh, so he goes out there, sees his brothers, and he hears this commotion stuff going on. And he says, what's the deal? What, who's going to go get fight the giant? And uh, his brother said, man, I don't know. I don't know. Give me one of them sandwiches. <laughs> you know, they, they, don't, they do not want to deal with this. They are scared to death. They are afraid. And in David's mind, he's saying, he's disrespecting my God. He's disrespecting my God. Where are all these grown men with all this armor on? What's the problem? God plus one's a majority. I can hear David. You know, and he's probably got one of his brothers pulling him back. (laughs) Don't go out there, David. Don't go out there. Dad will not like this. Don't go out there. David's saying, I'm going. I'm going. And so Saul said, finally we got somebody to go here. Put my armor on, man. David said, I don't need this stinking stuff, man. You don't understand. Our God is able. And see, David knew he was able because he, he and God had done battle with the elements and the critters. He already knew God. This is why David was so passionate about who God was. Let me tell you what. What happens to us in church is we lose our passion. We lose our passion. Passion doesn't just, you know, go into excitement. In fact, a lot of people who are passionate about God aren't excited at all. They're just intentional. But some of us, we get all excited. Fine, as long as Vance Havner says, when you hit the ground, you walk straight. David was that way. So he said, look, I got this. I got this. You boys go over here and eat your sandwiches. I'll take care of this. So he got those five smooth stones, one for the giant, and his tradition says, one for his four brothers. (laughs) I'll get this done. And on that day, now if David didn't win, God won. God won. Now David knew that. This was what happened in David's life. This was this was what so this was what so why he was so passionate. He knew God. Now, here's some things begin to happen in David's life. He did defeat the guy. Uh, you know, he did defeat him. He did bring the Ark of the Covenant back to Israel. You say that's an Indiana Jones thing. Yeah, it is. But what you have to understand is that the Ark of the Covenant represented the presence of God. Now, the, pre- the Ark of the Covenant today is in here. The presence of God is in a believer now. Not in the building, not in a box, but in a heart. And so David, he, he, he says, he brought the Ark of the Covenant, which back then represented the presence of God. The deal is they had a tabernacle in the wilderness, but they didn't have a place to put the Ark permanently. And so another thing that David did was he raised money for the temple. Jackie was his assistant. <laughs> <laughs> Her great, 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 I mean, you know. But see, I mean, David, see, God used David to do these things. It wasn't that the temple wasn't important. But then something happened in David's life. David took a detour. <laughs> he, was, he was someplace that he shouldn't be. You can always, it's always important to be where you're supposed to be. Where we get in trouble is when we're when we're in places and times we're not supposed to be. 
David was supposed to be in battle, but he was up on the porch and being very tempted. And you know the deal of David and Bathsheba and all that took place with him. The rest of David's life was not pretty. But David was always a person who was passionate for God, a heart for God. He had a lot of his children, his grandkids, problems, 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 problems. In fact, David's son now, who would be the next king, would be Solomon, who would get to build the temple because of David's sin he did not get to. Notice the pattern. Moses didn't get to. David didn't get to. God used, folks, God uses broken people. In fact, they're the only ones who become useful. Dr. Stanley always said, God's use of us is directly proportional to our brokenness. Not in spirit, but in will. Well, let me take you now to the 36th Psalm, just for a minute, okay? I want you to take a look at this because these are the things that David found out about God that made him passionate for him. This whole psalm is about really how rotten men can be, but it's really more about how loving God is. Verse 5 in Psalm 36. Your loving kindness, O Lord, extends to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Your righteousness is like the mountains of God. And your judgments are like the great deep. Lord, you preserve man and beast. And here we go again. How precious is your loving kindness, O God. And the children of men take refuge in the shadow of your wings. <laughs> I like that. Take refuge in the shadow of your wings. Now, there's four things on here. I just want you to grab a hold of these this morning. It's just, I just want, to, I want you to walk away with this. I want you to walk away with this. Four things about God. Now, here's what you need to understand. Part of the problem with our passion, two things to kind of suck the life out of us or suck the passion of us. One of, one of, one of these things that sucks the fashion, that, that sucks this life out of us is simply the circumstances of life. Life is not fair. Misery is optional, but life's not fair. And life throws a lot of stuff at us. It go, life goes like this. We have good times. We have rotten times. We have good times. We have rotten times. We have good times. Doesn't last very long. Then we have a rotten time that seems to last forever. And David understood that. And David knew that. But here's what he also knew. He knew that God didn't change. He knew that God wasn't this way because God was steady all along. And what was steady about him? These four things. One, his loving kindness. People sometimes, uh, I hear them talk and I feel the same way sometimes. I don't feel loved. I don't feel loved. We don't feel loved. Because the circumstances are saying everything but that. I don't feel loved. This is why, look, this is why God puts people in our life. <laughs> this is what the church is for. A while ago when you went around in Greece, people love to hear their name. The church ought to be one of the, the places. See, and, and God says, you know how lost people really know that you're really cool? Is they'll see you love each other. See you love each other. And see, this town, your reputation is based on how much you love each other. It's not based on whether or not you got an elevator. It's not based on whether or not we have two services. It's not based on whether or not you got a youth center. It's not based on all the things a lot of times that we think are really important. God says, look, this town will know about you and your passion for me based on how much you love each other. 
Now, all these other things are good and important, but they're secondary. Loving kindness. I don't know about you. Somebody asked me the other day at the office, said, Ron, one of my buddies, he said, I know you had a rough time. I said, yeah. And it's interesting enough, it was a, it was a dad who the same thing had happened to his son. He said, you need a hug? I said, yeah. Now, he couldn't reach around me. <laughs> but it was okay. It was okay. And I see people all the time. Rick Warren makes some mention of the fact that when people come to church, he, he and some of the folks, some of his pastors, people want a hug. Why? Because it's the only one they get for the week. Loving kindness. How does it get out? Through us. But God doesn't change. Well, it doesn't just say his loving kindness. His faithful. Circumstances will change, but God doesn't change because of circumstances. He's still faithful. He's still faithful to us. Let me talk about how faithful you've been. I talked to Mike just a little earlier. The budget was going to be around 650000 Because you have been faithful over the last three or four months, they've been able to push the budget up to 695000 roughly. Why? Because the faithfulness of this church. But God is faithful to us. God is faithful to us. Faithful, righteous. <laughs> He's holy. God's holy and that doesn't change. And that's why it's important that we have a Savior because we're not holy. We become aware when we see God, and we, come, we become aware of the fact that God is holy and we're not. And that's why when Jesus did what he did, he said, I count your trust of me as righteousness because I have done something to take the barrier down between man and God. And you've received the gift. And just is the last one. What's that mean? It means he's fair. Don't ever think God's not fair. People are not fair. God's fair. <laughs> a defensive coordinator, he didn't think the ref was being fair. Well, that's a good picture of life. But guess what? God is fair. And sometimes in the, in the minute, we don't see that. But <laughs> one of the things that happens is down the road, we look back and say, you know what? I'm glad God didn't answer my prayer. Because <laughs> you said, just wipe them out, God, or what, you know, I don't want to live no more. Take me, Lord. God says, not yet. Well, I know, but I'm hurting. Yeah, I know, but you're not hurting enough. Now, why would God do that? Because it drives us to the point of our dependence being on God. Last thing here, I put it in here, <laughs> just a couple things. Circumstances come and go, God doesn't. But the big question is, at the end of our life, what are people going to say that you were passionate for? <laughs> what are people going to say that you were passionate for? That's a big question. Now I want to do something here for the invitation just a little bit, just a little different. I want to ask the band to come on up, if you would. Get ready to do that. You know my name. Okay, can we do that? Sure, we can do that. We can do that, can't we? Now, I just need four deacons. One, two, three, four. There you go. There's three of them. Here's another one, Bob. All right. One, 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 one. Now, y'all just stand it. That's good. Now, I need you all to, to move in here to the first seven or eight pews like you're a choir. So come on. We're going, this is a little different. Come on. Come on now. Just, just go with me now. I ain't going to hurt you. We're going to be a part of a choir here. Don't go out the back door on me now. Come on. 
Don't run. Won't hurt. Promise. That away. That away. All the way across. Some of you are sitting just right. All right. Everybody right in here. Yeah. Yeah, that's looking really good. Yeah, we're getting there. I want, I want you to notice something before we sing. They'll just, just write off. I want you to look toward the back just a second. Do you, is there room for more people? Wouldn't it be cool if you had to sit toward the front simply because people are back there? Wouldn't that be cool? Now, I'm going to lead this choir. This choir is going to sing one of my favorite songs. And uh, the reason I know it is when everything breaks down, I need to know he knows where I'm at. I need to know that he still knows my name. <laughs> I need to know he's got me covered. I need to know in kind of man talk, I got your back. Okay? I need to know that. My emotions need to know that the God of the universe who created this whole thing, who knew me before when I was being formed in my mother's womb, even, even before that, he knows where I'm at and he knows my name. Now, some of you this morning are not sure about that. And you don't have the kind of relationship I'm talking about. Or something's gotten in between or maybe this morning you've come and you just need a hug. Now there's four men up here who love God. And I guarantee you all four of these men have been down a road where there were times in their life they weren't sure. But then they begin to realize God knew their name. And I want to ask you to come for prayer to be saved. Maybe to join this church. Whatever God is speaking to you about. But I want this choir to sing this song. Can we do that? Say yes. Alright, let's sing, guys. Just belt it out. Just do it. Don't be... Yeah, just do it. in his hands he knows my name he knows my every thought he sees each fear that falls you come if God's speaking to you
Let's grab hold of somebody's hands and pray as we leave, okay? Lord Jesus, this morning I want to thank you for interceding on my behalf. The devil said, you know what? He does not deserve heaven. And you said, no, he doesn't. But because my blood covers him, not only does he have heaven, but he has life, and you can't touch him. I pray this morning for my brothers and sisters in this room who need to know that you know their name, who need to know that you're always there and will never, ever leave them or forsake them. I pray this morning, Father, that the, you would bless them this week, you would do exceedingly abundantly above anything they ask or think. You would watch over them. And you would make them aware that you know their name. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Bless you. Enjoy your week.